Um, I'm Nina. I work at Solo on the Glue platform team doing multi-cluster Istio stuff. Um, I'm also well, like, on the Kubernetes release team. Um, so I was the enhancements lead for 119 and uh, the current release uh, notes lead <laughs> for 131. So if you've seen emails from me, Kubernetes related, that's probably why. And I'm Peter. I also work at Solo. Uh, I'm not part of the release team. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mostly work on, uh, on STO, uh, creating content, doing talks, doing workshops. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Twitter, I'm on GitHub, so you can connect with me there. Um, yeah, that's me. Cool. All right, so what is STO? Uh, how many of you have heard of STO? All right, how many of you are actually using it? All right, a little bit less, but we're, we're there, right? So STO is a service mesh. It's basically an infrastructure layer that you add on top of or under your apps. Uh, there are three things that Istio does. It's, it's sec it secures your application, so you get mutual TLS by default. In order to have mutual TLS, you have to have strong identity, with, which Istio gives to your workloads and applications. Once you have the strong identity, you can do authorization policies, right? Second one is it connects your applications, so you can do traffic shifting, you can do canary, you can do mirroring, you can inject faults, you can inject delays, uh, you can configure retries, you can configure timeouts, you can do circuit breakers, you can do rate limiting, you can do a lot of these things. And lastly, you can do monitoring, so metrics, any observability, uh, any logs, everything about the traffic, because Istio is in the middle of all the traffic, of all the packages that flow between your uh, Applications. So that's how it does all these things. It's not part of your application. You don't have to, it's not a library that you reference in your application that you have to rebuild. It's outside, it's part of the infrastructure. Yep. So there's sidecar deployment mode of Istio, which is on the left side on the slide. So the idea here is all these security connectivity and observability features of Istio are implemented in the sidecar that runs next to every application in, uh, in your Kubernetes cluster, in your mesh. And then as the traffic exits and enters your application, your workloads, that thing gets implemented by the sidecar. So retries, traffic redirection, security, MTLS, all those things are done by the sidecar, right? So everything goes through the proxy. The new deployment mode that was introduced two years ago, yeah. you know, like, let's say more than a year ago, right, is uh, Istio ambient mode. So the idea there is there's no sidecars anymore. All the functionality that was implemented by the sidecars is split into L4 and L7. So there's a new component called the Z tunnel, which is an L4 proxy, and that Z tunnel manages identity and does mutual TLS. And there's a second optional component called a waypoint proxy that you deploy if you need to handle any L7 concerns. So if you want to do any uh, routing on the paths or using headers or you're using any HTTP concerns, you would deploy an optional waypoint proxy, which is an instance of an Envoy proxy, and it gets configured as well. Functionally, it's the same, right? All the same features that traditional sidecar Istio uh, does and enables you to do can be done with the ambient mesh as well. The big upside here is that there's no more sidecar per application. So previously sidecar per application, if you scale it up, you're scaling up your sidecars as well. In ambient, you don't have to do that because there's an L4 proxy per node, just one. Right. Yep. Anything else you want to add? Okay. No, I think that was. All right, yeah, so going, uh, like we're gonna take a look at some policies you might run into uh, while doing the challenge. So the first one is uh, called the HTTP route, and it's actually not an Istio policy, it's a gateway API policy. Um, so Istio passes the gateway API conformance tests, uh, and that means you can use gateway API resources to configure uh, both the Istio like, ingress gateway and things in the mesh because of the, the gamma initiative. Um, so uh, in this case, this HP route um, is doing uh, HP routing on the gateway, but your parent ref can actually select uh, something in the mesh. And um, it defines the host name 
cowpokes.com and some rules that uh, the traffic matches on. So in this case, the uh, path prefix um, moo, and then uh, the backend ref is where the traffic's actually going to, so like my service on port 8080. Um, this is equivalent to the Istio's like traditional virtual service uh, resource, um, but um, because Gateway API uh, works really well with Ambient, that's actually how the gateways get the, the waypoints get deployed that do the L7 uh, policies. Uh, we're going to show an example of an HTTP route, but uh, it also uh, like Istio also still supports the old like virtual service um, destination rule APIs as well. Anything else, Dad? No. Unless anyone has any questions, feel free to like raise your hand or. Scream yeah. or <laughs> yeah, <great. laughs> shout. So the question is uh, only one instance of waypoint proxy per node. So it's not one instance of waypoint proxy. It's one instance of the Z tunnel, the L4 proxy. That one runs per node, and it's required one per node. For waypoint proxy, the L7, you only deploy it when you need it and you can deploy it per namespace. So you can say namespace foo, uh, all of the L7 policies are handled by this single waypoint proxy that runs in that namespace. Or you can say, well, I wanna have multiple waypoint proxies per service accounts, right? So you can say in this one namespace, I can have three, four, five, 10, right? Waypoint proxies per service accounts. Right? So that's how it's sliced. Yeah, and that's actually something you're going to run into in the tutorial. You'll see uh, waypoints per namespace. Um, so uh, you might look at different namespaces and see that there are different names, different waypoints in each namespace. Um, cool. Okay, so the next policy that you might encounter is the authorization policy. So this is an Istio-specific policy, and um, in the Ambient case, uh, there's actually two places where it can get applied. Um, if it's an L4 policy, so there's no um, you know L7 stuff like routes or, or headers or whatever, um, it's going to be applied at the Z tunnel. And then if there are uh, L7 stuff, it'll be applied at the waypoint. Um, so in this case, we have uh, a selector that applies uh, to your Stagecoach um, app, so it's protecting the Stagecoach, and uh, it's denying anything from the, the robber um, service account. So this would be an example of an L4 uh, policy. Another policy you might encounter, very similar, to, uh, related <laughs> to the authorization policy, is the request authentication policy. So um, this is when you're using a, 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 a JWT token. Um, so in this case, like the request authentication does, doesn't actually secure uh, your um, your app, um, but it's uh, validating that the um, the uh, JWT that you're using is valid. Um, and then you actually still have to define your authorization policy with rules that reference claims and um, other things that um, actually use the token. Um, and then when you uh, send a request, in this case, we have uh, the authorization policy is applying to sagecoach.com. Uh, you provide the header with the authorization bearer token um, to actually um, be able to, to reach the, the stagecoach service. Cool. So then the last thing you'll need for this uh, tutorial is uh, some Coop's TL knowledge. Yes, yeah, so these are very specific and we can bring them up uh, as you're going through the, uh, through the tutorial, I guess. Some of the tips and tricks. I mean, there's a lot of Coop's TL tips and tricks out there that you can go and find and these are very basic uh, in a way, but these are the ones that you'll definitely need to go through the, uh, through the tutorial. First one is, and this is, I always do this on every machine, is do the alias, right? So you don't have to type kubectl, right? That's the first one. Uh, the second, the question here that I'm posing, and I'm posing it because you'll need it at some point, is how does the CLI know uh, which cluster to connect to, right? Once you're inside a pod, uh, it's environment variables, right? So make sure that you check those at some point as well. Uh, the second, second thing is how do you know what, given the service account, given the token, how do you know what do you have access to within the cluster, right? So that's the auth can I dash dash list command. You get an output of the resources, maybe resource names as well, uh, that you have access to from that pod with that token. Dash O wide on pods deployments, well, that doesn't work on deployments. Probably ser services and pods, yeah. right? Uh, you get some more information, such as IP addresses, uh, that you'll use as well. You'll also need to edit a resource at some point, or a couple of them. And then lastly, 
if you have to use, and you will have to use it, a different service account token with kubectl to access uh, resources, you use the dash dash token and the actual value of the, of the token to, uh, uh, to make kubectl uh, connect to the cluster with, uh, with that uh, identity. Cool. Um, well, with all those tips, uh, welcome to the town of Istio Springs. Um, <laughs> We have a fun little town here. Uh, there's a couple uh, buildings that you might visit in, in your stay. Unfortunately, you're, you're starting the jail uh, building, so uh, hopefully you can get out of, of jail at some point. Um, and then there's some other interesting things like the, the safe house, the saloon, uh, a bank. Um, and with that, here's the QR code to scan, and that should pull up the instruct. Um, we'll keep it up for a while so people can actually yeah. load it. Yeah. Um, but it's, you don't have to run anything locally on your computer. It's all through the uh, instruct. Uh, yeah, it's all, it's all in the browser. All the, the environment will be there. Um, if you go to the bit.ly link or scan, whatever is easier, the, um, the page that you're going to land on, you can click start. I think it's start or launch or something yeah. like that. Um, It'll take a while to spin up. Uh, well, just like, like a minute, minute or two, two minutes, uh, right? Not, not that long. Uh, it'll take a while to spin up, yeah. Uh, yeah, and if you're if you're doing it, please please do it now. Uh, we'll we'll bring it back as well uh, the the link later on if if people missed it. But uh, all good, everyone ready? Everyone? Uh, at least a couple of people. I see a couple of laptops out, so that's good. Cool. Uh, um, and then uh, yeah, well, I guess just a recap of some uh, objectives, rules, and tips. So uh, your goal is to get the money, the flag. Um, exiting out of instruct is not a way to get the money. Um, you won't get any cool flag, so uh, so don't click like the, the skip the next and the exit button um, because that'll just make you have to reload everything and you'll you'll waste time. Um, all the tools you need are in the pod, so like coops deal, curl. Um, there's only one flag, um, so you'll have to follow the trail across multiple uh, scenarios to find it. And the most important thing is have fun. This isn't competitive. There's no scoreboard. Um, if you want to ask people for help, we're going to be around. You can ask your neighbor. Um, yeah. Yeah. We do have some prizes, though. So. Yes. Well, <laughs> I, it's the, the first people to finish, we have uh, a variety of prizes that you can choose from. Um, we're trying to, to get rid of our swag. <laughs> so we have uh, the, what, what's oh, the, the power banks. So the we power have the power banks. banks. We have hot, the commodity item. Those are squids, right? That's what they're called, yeah, the so. charging cable-y thingies. Cool. We have stickers. We have t-shirts. Uh, so yeah. You didn't come here for free, so you're going to get something. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. All right, so we can start the first act, which is jail. So you'll, if you launch the instruct, you should be in the jail pod. And we'll start the timer. Uh, 20 minutes, go, I guess. Try to, try to get out of the jail to uh, f find out the clues where to go next. And if you get out and you want to continue, feel free. Like, there's no, again, you know, requirement to, to wait to for wait. us. To wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. like, you can do the whole challenge now um, and speed through it. Um, but we will try to give a hint so, like, everyone can keep progressing. Um, yeah, I think, I think after 10 minutes, we should switch to maybe um, instruct here as well and yeah. just show, show people how to get from there. It's a hands-on talk and tutorial, so. <laughs> We should have done some music or something. Oh, wait, oh, wait. Yeah, I think I have Spotify. Let me pull up. Hide the my... hands. Hide the hands. Hide the hands. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh shoot. Ah. Hide the hands. <laughs> okay, well. Yeah, so this is the screen that you should end up on, and then you click Start, and this will take a couple of, like, a minute or two. All right, so let's give a couple of uh, hints. You're in Firefox. Yeah, on the right. Oh, it's here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's start. Oops. Oh, now I have to wait for it to. <laughs> that one's faster, maybe. It'll come up. I guess the, fir the first step, while this is still spinning up for me, is there's a text file in the, in the, in the root folder. 
I think people found it, but they might have missed the first line. So let me, let me hide this. Yeah, that's big enough. Right. So there's a jail wall dot txt in there. By the way, these these things here, these are they're by mistake. <laughs> However, they're a tip and like something that you're gonna have to use later. But a lot of people missed this first line here. <laughs> So, so you, you get to this hint, which is telling you 8080 slash break. So you can see that there's something running here, right? And 8080 slash break will give you something. <laughs> But the image is telling you to be persistent, so it's a random number, so you have to be persistent randomly, random number of times. Uh, but if you're persistent enough, you'll get something. You'll get a safe house code, which is called escape into the mesh, and it's telling you use it to escape into the safe house pod. So how do you escape there? Let me do the alias. So you use the opt can I dash dash list command, which will show you. It's it's not rendering well here, but it'll basically show you show you that you have you can get and list this specific namespace called safe house in mesh. So let's list some things there. So let's list services. Save house in mesh. And you'll notice there's a save house service in there. There's a waypoint as well. <laughs> notice there's port 22. So we have port 22, we have a password, right? So the next, lo next logical thing we can do is we can try SSAging, right? So let's do that. I think this should work. Yep, there you go. So let's say yes. And the password was escape into the mesh. Escape into the mesh. You can't imagine how many times I missed type that password. <laughs> Maybe I mistyped it now as well, of course. <laughs> into the mesh. There you go. So you're in safe house now. You escaped the jail. Now it's time to explore further. And this is what takes us to, whoops, sorry. We're still not in act two, right? Well, let's say it's act two, right? So the, <laughs> the act two is, you're in a safe house, you escape the jail, get to the saloon. And remember, uh, and we can keep maybe these commands up. You can use the combination of these commands and or similar things that I did and tried uh, to escape the jail. So we're gonna put the music up, let people go for another 20 minutes, right? And then uh, we'll continue. We'll, we'll uh, run through Act Two, um, the saloon. So, um, first thing you might notice is uh, if I run Gustiel, uh, I can't type. Alias. Oh, yeah, let's alias. alias it. Alias. So, <laughs> now that we've assisted in, <laughs> let's re alias it. Uh, um, and then run can I uh, off list. Oh, oh odd. Uh, off can I list. <laughs> Cool, and then if you scroll all the way up again, so similar to what we did before, there's a new resource called uh, the saloon namespace that we have get and list permissions for. So if I do the same coops to, uh, or <laughs> pods namespace uh, saloon, 
Uh, I can see there's a bunch of uh, pods in, in the solution namespace. And the same thing with the services. So if I do uh, kget uh, services in the saloon namespace, I see uh, the same uh, list here for the services. So there's an ambient deputy, there's a barkeep, a piano player, a sh sidecar sheriff, and a waypoint. Um, the sidecar sheriff is the only one with two uh, uh, containers. Um, because it actually has the Istio sidecar injected, everything else is in the ambient mesh. So it's um, all of this traffic. If you like do a coop steal, get um, pod like um, ambient deputy, uh, saloon OEML, um, you'll notice that this actually has uh, the label for ambient at the very top. Um, so the it, every uh, all, the barkeep, the piano player, and the um, Ambient deputy are all labeled for ambient and don't need a sidecar. Um, but that's just a fun fact. <laughs> to actually uh, do the next part, uh, we can first send some some traffic. So um, we can use the fully qualified do domain name based on the service name. So if we do like uh, ambient deputy dot saloon, we get a fun little message back. Um, we can do the same thing for the sidecar sheriff. Um, oh, I think I misspelled sheriff. I can't spell. Our back denied. Okay, I, I think the sheriff doesn't want to talk to us. Interesting. I think we messed up something, but that's okay. Uh, if we curl the, um, the barkeep, uh, he's not very nice. Let me actually clear it so it's easier to read. So the barkeep seems to not want to talk to us unless we look at the HTTP routes. Um, and if we curl the, um, the piano player, the last person, <laughs> uh, they also say uh, check out the HTTP routes. So we're going to do that next. So we're going to get the HTTP route um, and see what routes exist in the solution namespace. So there are two HTTP routes, one for the barkeep and one for the piano player. So let's look at the piano player first. So if we do uh, HTTP route, Can't type. We really need a shorter version of this name. Uh, uh, piano player. And then do OYAML. We can look at the YAML. So uh, the HP route here um, is matching on, um, is, is going to the backend ref for the piano player. And the, we, from this, we, we get a little hint that there's a path that exists, mood for a melody, that we can send traffic to. So if we do the same request as before, Where's our piano player? And type mood for a melody. We should get a response back. And we get a silly little song. Um, We've actually like sung this song, but oh, we're yeah. not going to do it today. No, not so. today. <laughs> <laughs> it's an exercise to all of you <laughs> later. So um, yeah, so this gives us a little hint to look at uh, the whiskey endpoint for the barkeep. Um, and uh, so now uh, we can also look at the, um, the HTTP route for the barkeep, but this is actually just um, a fun little example. Um, it won't actually give us any hints on what to do next. Um, so this is a, a barkeep uh, HTTP route. It's doing a URL rewrite. So um, if you ask it, what do you have? It's gonna respond with beer, which is a fun Easter egg, um, but it doesn't actually progress the storyline. So um, although you, you can do that, and we can do that now, uh, barkeep. Sash, what do you have? It just responds with beer, which isn't very useful. But if we use the hint that we got last time um, and click whiskey, we get uh, this nice little text um, and uh, this kind of looks like uh, maybe a little token. <laughs> so um, this you can actually set in your environment variable as token and uh, maybe use it to explore further. Yes. Or you can also go to jot.io and paste this in maybe uh, to see what it, what it is, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if it actually gives you any. I don't think it gives you any additional. Info, I mean, but, but, it, it yeah, gives you an idea it, what it is, can, yeah. right? But uh, also, if, if you refer back to that list of helpful commands 
uh, we have. There's one command at the end, and maybe I'm giving out away too much. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we have, uh, I think, 20 minutes left. So I'll... First, did anyone finish? Not yet? OK. No? All right, so let's do... Let's um, do it together. Yeah, let's do it together. Let's, yeah, let's do that. All right, so, oh, I'm back in jail? Yeah, I... It restarts and tr throws if, you back? If you're, yeah, but, but we know the password, so it won't Yeah, so we know, we know the password, so I can do SVC, uh, save house in, in mesh. Oh, the color. Yeah, let yeah, me see if I can... To... Oh, there you oh, go. Okay, nice. That's better? <laughs> All right, so let's do alias k kubectl q get svc uh, save house in a little bit bigger. That's better. All right, so save house in mesh. We have the IP. We know it's port 22, so we'll do ssh. And the password escape into the mesh. Okay, so we're now in the safe house. So from the safe house, we have to copy these environment variables. Oh, wait, these are they're here. Yeah, I think I copied them wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. So because we SSH into it, these variables are not set. So once we set them, we can do alias. And then we can do odd can I uh, dash oh, dash oh, Yeah, we can just send the request, right? We already know. Yeah, yeah, we, we know that it's the... Um, the whiskey endpoint that we talked about last time. Saloon. Whiskey, right? Oh, saloon. Yeah. <laughs> there I go. All right, so we got the token. So I'll copy this one. Let's copy it and let's do export token equals this. Okay, so we have it in the environment variable. So now we can do cube auth uh, dash dash token, token auth can I dash dash list. So we see what we can get with that token, and it's telling us that we have access to authorization policies with specific names, so Vault 1, Vault 2. There's a bank namespace. There's Vault 3 authorization policy. So let's see. So we know that there's, well, let's list them, right? Token, token, uh, get services in the bank namespace because we know that there's a namespace. So we see there's main vault, 22, so that's a hint, SSH, we don't have a password. So there's Vault 1, Vault 2, Vault 3, all on the port 80. So let's do Vault 1 dot bank, see what we get there. We get RBAC access denied. However, we do have access to authorization policies. So let's look at those. Authorization policy bank. Oh, it's wrapped around yeah. <laughs> token. Token author, oh, get, right? Get yep. authorization policy. Oh, it's a lot of typing. What did I miss? Oh, we have to get them by name, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, there we go. I forgot. Uh, so let's see again. Can I? And I'll see the name. So let's see. Vault 1 L4 policy. So we'll get this one by name. And I'll do OYAML right away. All right, so this looks better or newer. So we have authorization policy from Istio. It's allow. It's allowing requests from these two principles, right? And this gives you a hint. It says change me, right? <laughs> Whatnot. But it's also targeting this service. So there's two uh, solutions to this. I'll go with the simpler one, or faster one, I guess. So let's edit, because we have access to do that as well. So what I'll do is, I could go here. Actually, let's do this one, why not, right? We know we're in safe house, in, in mesh, mesh yeah. namespace, <laughs> right? So we'll do safe house in, in mesh, and we're using, we're the, using default. the default service account, if I can type. Default, now let's save this. Now let's try again that request. There go. This time we get a hint, right? It's telling us, oh, there's some audience, there's some issuer here, right? So the hint is jot.io, so it's a jot token. So let me copy this. 
Do you have, uh, can I start an editor? Yeah, I just didn't need one. Do you have one open already? Uh, I don't want to open something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, let me, I'll open yeah. that, a new one. <laughs> I think it, it's actually the. We don't want to flash any passwords uh, here. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Right. So many editors open. Too much of these code. Okay. Oh, perfect. Let's plug this back in. Yep. All right. I think it'll uh, take a second. Uh, yeah, it's fine. All right, perfect. So I'll, I'll just paste this in just so I, uh, yep. so I don't forget. So let's go back. So that's vault one. Vault two, we get a similar error. So follow the same thing as we did before. There was a vault two auth as well, authorization policy. So let's look at that one. Uh, so we can actually edit that right away, right? So it's, oh, maybe not. Okay, so let's edit vault two policy. Let's see what's in here. So there's an allow policy again, right? So there's a principle, right, uh, that we would have to change to where we are or this one. And then it's saying, oh, there's slash vault two slash open. So we know a path that we can send the request to. But we also know we have to set the x dash test token, uh, a header, not token, right, with this value, right? So let's do that. So instead of me doing stuff there, the easiest way here is to say, well, we're just gonna apply this policy to something that doesn't exist, right? So I don't know what I, yeah, I made a change to a service that doesn't exist. So let's save that one. And let's do curl vault to dot bank. And we know we need to set a header that was x dash test. This is a robbery. Was it like that? Yeah. And then we know it's vault two slash open, right? Okay, so we get the second portion of the jot token. Let's grab this one. Let's go back here. Paste it here for later. We'll come back. And then there's vault three. So we have three vaults. So let's see what this one tells us. All right, so denied by uh, uh, external authorization for not found header X Rob. All right, so this was telling us something. So let's add this, see what happens here. Curl header, this one, vault, vault, three dot bank. So it's saying vault three is still locked. Maybe there is a path to the authorization policy. You can, yeah, of course there is. So let's take a look <laughs> at that one. Uh, and I don't know what the name is, so I'll list them again. Oh, it was the can I. There you go, can I? There you go. So there, that's the third authorization policy we have access to. So let's take a look at that one. So we'll do token get authorization policy by name in the bank namespace, and we'll get YAML. So notice that this one has an action of custom. So Istio allows you to configure a custom, like an external authorization policy. So if you want to integrate your own, or if you want to do OPA, or if you want to do anything else, you can do that as well, right? So you can configure, Istio will send a request to authorize, and you can do whatever you want to do. You can query whatever you want to query in your uh, custom service, but you can still use Istio resources to configure it, right? So using a custom one, and it's telling us, oh, there's a slash break dash vault three. So let's try that one. Let's see what, what we get there. So we'll send a request to this guy, break, break vault three. Boom, this looks interesting. So uh, we know that this is a private, <laughs> <laughs> private key, right, and there's RSA and the algorithm that was used, so let's do this. So by now that we know we have a JWT token, so let's copy this here. So you got these three pieces. So let's see, let's go back and look at the services again in the bank. Uh, what did I do? Get, yeah. Oh, get, okay. All right, 
So known as the bank main vault as port 22. So if we try your SSH main vault dot bank, why is it closed? There's oh, it has to be the uh, the IP. Never mind. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's like we got so far <laughs> then for this to oh it's the pod, pod yeah. Never mind. yeah so we have to get the pod okay a pod and a wide yeah. and a bank bank a wide and main vault that's the IP so this should work all right so let's do yes we need a password right how do we get a password? <laughs> so let's let's do let's go with Jot, right? So let's go with Jot. We tried sending a request, right? Uh, Actually, I don't think we send a request to Main Vault because we did it. The other uh, oh, we did. Okay, cool. We yeah. Yep. Oh, there's access denied. So there's another authorization policy there, right? Oh, I know. I forgot. You can tell by me not knowing that who built this portion. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. So let's do uh, request authentication, right? Authentication, and I think we can go. I think this will work. I think, yeah, there you go. So there's a request authentication targeting the main vault. And we need a JOT token that's issued by this issuer and signed by this. Uh, this key. So we have a token here, we have the key here, so let's get the, let's construct a jot from this one. So we'll go to jot.io, we'll get this, paste it in the payload. We also need the audience and issuer in here, and we also need the key. Notice the RSA, RS2556. So we have to change this one as well. RS, and then we'll paste the private key here, and we have a token. So a JOT token that we can use to send a request to main vault. So let's do that. So let's do curl header authorization, bearer token, and I'll paste it in here. And we'll do main vault dot bank. Boom. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll need to use the password I want gold to open the main vault. So let's do that. So let's do SSH. This one. I, oh, I already made a mistake. <laughs> I want gold. Let's zoom out <laughs> for nice ASCII art here. <laughs> So we're in, uh, uh, in, the, in the main vault now. So let's see what's there. So there's red herring, TXT. Let's look at that one. Oh, All yeah. right, yay. It's a gluey with a cowboy hat <laughs> to go with the theme. Let's look at the gold. There's a gold thingy here, treasure box. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, bags of money. Let's look at bags of money. Yay, that's kind of small. But, uh, and then lastly, finally, there, there's a flag. I think it's a unicorn, right? It's, it's a horse. You're it's a horse? It oh, it's a horse. I don't know why I thought it's, uh, of course. Asterisk there was no unicorns, with, right, in a... Wild West. So, so yeah, so sorry. <laughs> Congratulations, you have completed the capture of the Istio flag challenge. Now you're rich with knowledge of Istio. <laughs> and you can grab the loot and ride off into the sunset. And loot is here in front. Yes. <laughs> and if we run out here, you can always stop by our, uh, uh, our booth and grab some loot over there. Thank you very much. Thanks. Vault three. Vault three. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to take a look at that again? So if you exit. Yeah. So vault three. So we did. Yeah, so you, it's it's like, oh main vault or vault no, three. No vault three. Uh, oh the vault three. So yeah. the custom off is really stupid because it, it's basically the Istio's testing custom off. So you just provide it the header that it asks for and it lets you in. So we do. Um, but you will also need to look at the off policy to get the the path. So. Oh, can I? 
list, right? And then we have the third one, right? It's this one, right? So that's authorization policy. So we can get get authorization policy. Name bank, namespace bank. Oh, oh YAML. So it's a custom action, right? So it's basically telling you that there's a provider with this name that's enforcing the policy. And the rules are, so anything after that is the same, right? So you just need to send the request to the slash break vault three. So that, yeah, which is, oh, curl. Curl. <laughs> Um, because if you don't have the header, it uh, will deny you with a message. So yeah. You, so yeah. So if I do it without, so let, 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 let's go to. So if I do this, right? So if I do vault three, vault three dot bank, it's gonna say you need to have the header there. With, with the header. Yeah. We can. Uh, we, we, we can check, yeah. But the the this header is checked in the custom custom auth, right? So if you don't have it, oh, I think it, it's uh, break it's not going. It's going to tell you that you need the header. And then you right? need the header as well as the the path. Yeah, and then add the header as well. So like do dash h and then. Yeah, so th this is like not how you usually are going to use custom auth. Uh, it's just like a silly example for. Uh, to show the power of custom off in Istio, but um, yeah. in this case, you just literally give it the header at once and it's happy. <laughs> Can you go back to the policy one that you said? Policy one? Yeah, for the vault one, sorry, that's with the 14. Uh, vault one? Yeah, the vault 14 policy. Oh, the oh, L4, L4 policy. L4, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, where is it? Vault. I don't know the names of it. What was the name? Uh, I think. Yeah. It's L four. Oh no, it's not that. It's something else. Uh, I'll find it. I'll find yeah, it. Or... It's just I'm too lazy to type. That's the <laughs> that's the problem here. So, <laughs> oh, can I dash 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 list? I think maybe it's Vault one. Vault one. Oh, it's yeah. Vault Vault one. Dash L4 dash policy. There you go. There you go. So this one is applied to service called Vault 1, and it's allowing requests coming from these two principles. I don't think, can you do that? I don't remember. I don't think you do. Well, we can try. Why not? We, it, it, it works? Work? Yeah, you can do it that way. Yeah, there's there's multiple different. solutions to this, right? So one of the solutions was to actually go under the principles and type out safe house and mesh, right, and do that. The other one is to just apply this policy to whatever. Right? And it's just not going to be applied anymore. You right? can keep the original principles and change the action to deny because the deny action will deny only those yes. principles. Yeah, so or exactly. One. Yeah, I think the original was change me or something, whatever it was. You can change the action here to say deny. And what this will do is this will deny the requests from these, right? Which they means it'll exist. allow your request to go through, right? So there's multiple. And same with other, uh, the yeah. Vault 2 as well, right? It's the same. Or, yeah, Vault 2. Is the same multiple ways to solve it, I guess, and, and get through it. So, 